Hello and welcome to the show. Now, onboard monitor recorders for cameras have been a game changer. With dedicated video capture at their heart, increased bitrate, extended record times, and often being self powered, their larger, high quality, high brightness screens give the best preview a camera op can possibly need, with literally a box full of additional tools as well. Absolutely, there are many choices out there, and today we're looking at one of the market leaders, Atomos, and to tell us what's been going on with them is Chris Hampton from Holden. Hi, welcome to the show, Chris. So Holden, you've been you've been distributing Atomos products for, for about a year now. Um, let's start with some highlights since then. What's been going on? Well, thank you for having me uh, having me on. It's good to, to see you guys again. Um, yeah, it's been. It's been busy, and obviously, with a brand as big as Atomos, uh, that was always going to be the case because uh, they just keep innovating and pushing out products. And uh, yeah, we've we've got to keep up with it. Um, in terms of highlights, obviously, Ninja V that was you know is their most popular on-camera recorder monitoring device. It's a five-inch unit that's still incredibly current. You know, it can record 5.9K in ProRes mm. RAW. You still have ProRes on there, you know, DNX and now H.265 as well. So you've got plenty of options for how you actually want to record. Um, but the main update with that unit isn't actually the Ninja V itself. It's uh, the addition of a new expansion module called the Atom X-Cast, which, which essentially allows you to transform this little five-inch monitor recorder into a four-channel right. HD live streaming unit. So... First of all, Chris, I've always called it a Ninja 5, so we're going to call it the Ninja V. Um, when did it first appear, and sort of where does it fit in to the range? And, and I guess it'd be interesting to know where what the Plus offers over the uh, non-Plus version of the V. Yeah, well, it's actually, uh, it, it, it's it's a couple of years old now, uh, really. Um, and what it essentially offers you is it's a 1,000 nit uh, screen so it can really it can display 10 stops of dynamic range you know so if you're looking at uh you know having something relatively portable it's not it's not that big but it's it's very rugged um to bring with your kit for your shooting camera so that you can actually monitor with confidence what your camera is capturing whether you're shooting on a cine style camera whether you're shooting on a, a small mirrorless camera then you can have something that's going to give you consistent monitoring results every time that you go out and shoot. Um, now, of course, the big benefit with, with the Ninja V is that it is a recorder as well. So if you're using the likes of, you know, a mirrorless camera that has rather limited internal recording codecs, uh, you can obviously bypass that and essentially shoot in a, a compressed RAW, so using ProRes RAW, and get more out of your image. I think at the moment there's something like 25 cameras that support ProRes RAW. So, you know, there's plenty of options out there for being able to capture all that information. Now, in terms of the Ninja V Plus, which is the latest unit in, in that sort of lineup, it's the same screen, it's the same chassis really, but the, the main difference is that this unit, instead of being able to support to 5.9K, uh, can support 8K uh, 30 frames a second or 4K 120 frames a second. And currently the 4K 120 frames a second uh, will work with the likes of the Sony FX6 and the FX9. And so the Atom X cast that um, is a bolt-on. Is it, is it is it a separate unit, separate screen, or is it just a bolt-on that transforms the Ninja Five or uh, Ninja V? Sorry, into <laughs> I've, I've done it. You can say Ninja um, Five uh, as well. That's Ninja, fine. Ninja, Ninja V, Ninja, Ninja Five. Ninja, Ninja, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, so so, but the Atom X cast is it a separate unit? Is it a big unit? Is it a big lump, or is it? And what does the, Atomex cast. What does it offer? What what extra? What does it give you? Yeah, so it, it it'll actually work with the Ninja V and the Ninja V Plus. Um, so it doesn't matter which unit you have. Uh, this this basically is a a physical bolt-on expansion module that will sit on the back of the unit. Uh, so it's really designed so that you're using the, the Ninja V or V Plus on a tabletop um, laid down. And essentially what it does, it gives you some physical buttons, but also some physical in and outs, HDMI inputs and outputs. Um, and essentially what it does is it utilizes your Ninja's built-in screen, which obviously is calibrated, it's bright. You've got all of the monitoring tools that you get uh, obviously available for your live stream that you have available when you're doing, you know, let's say traditional recording with a cine style camera. 
Um, but it turns it into a four channel HD switcher. So you will have a multi-viewer displayed on the Ninja V, so there's no need to use an external monitor if you don't want to, or a larger screen. Uh, and you can use the physical buttons on the expansion module to cut between those different inputs that you're feeding into it. Um, you do have two HDMI outputs, so you can obviously feed it into a, a monitor, or you know, if you need to show other people um, your output in a, in a real location, you can do. But at the same time, you can output over USB to live stream to an online audience as well. Okay, let's leave the Ninja uh, V for the time being and look at the Shinobi 7. Now, this is Atomos's monitor. Tell us what makes that special. I mean, um, to the untrained eye, it could look uh, like a Shogun with just no recording. Yeah, I mean, you know, what makes it special is that it's a hell of a lot of screen for not too much money, ultimately. Um, the Shinobi 5, Good. which was basically their... Um, Atomos's most entry level, I say entry level, just it, it was their most affordable monitor only. Mm. Um, is it was a five inch, kind of looked a little bit like a Ninja V, uh, but without the recording capabilities. The Shinobi 7, obviously, seven, it's a seven inch screen, so it's bigger, uh, but it has a way brighter screen. You know, it's 2200 nit, it's brighter than the Ninja V Plus, you know. Um, it supports 4K60 input, it has HDMI in and out, along with SDI in and out, uh, where on the the Shinobi 5, you know, you, you kind of just had HDMI. Um, and those inputs uh, allow cross-conversion as well. So, you know, if you're feeding HDMI in from your camera, you can automatically then take an SDI out, really useful if you're bringing that into a, a multi-camera production. Um, so you do get a lot of features for, for not too much money. And like I said, you know, with Atomos camera, or sorry, Atomos monitors, uh, once you've used one, mm. you, you can use them all. And, you know, once you rely on the tool set that you have available within Atom, Atomos, um, you know, you have that across the board. And it's the same for with the Shinobi 7. You have access to all of those professional monitoring tools. So in terms of the power, Chris, um, I know the Shinobi 5 has a single battery slot. Is that the same on the 7? Uh, no, it's not. The 7 has dual battery uh, slots and they are hot swappable. So obviously, you know, when one battery is depleting, you can swap it out uh, without having to power the unit down. And you do also have a dedicated DC barrel power connector as well. So if you just want to plug it into mains, for example, if you're doing studio work or, you know, a, a live multicam production, you can do as well. And OK, so finally, um, in monitoring is, is the Neon range. You've got two neons. I think it's quite a different product line to, to what we're used to seeing from Atomos, small portable field monitors sort of thing. And of course it could be used in the field. But yeah, t tell us a bit more about neon then. Yeah, of course. So um, with the neon range, you, ha you have two models. You have a, a 17 inch and a, a 24 inch. Uh, and these are really um, production monitors. Now in the past, I mean, you already alluded to, you know, Atomos don't have big monitors historically. Uh, the biggest they have yeah. previous to these monitors would be the Sumo 19, which again is a production monitor. But the, the key difference with the Neon range is really their the target to much more higher end. And, and when I say higher end is the right. screen quality it, it is just yeah. next level. Uh, you know, 10 bit DCI yeah. P3 color gamut display. You know, it's 1200 nit, 512 uh, backlight zones uh, and a super wide viewing angle. Uh, they are built for the rigors of production. So if you were to hold the, uh, one of those units, you know, they've got some weight to them. Um, they're built very well and they've got lots of mounting mm. points around there. But at the same time, you know, uh, as I just mentioned, within uh, the Atom uh, OS, you've got all of your professional monitoring tools available. So um, you can make sure that the shot that you're capturing is the shot that you want to capture. Um, it can record, it can play back. Um, so if you're on set and you want to quickly check something, you can do. Uh, and the real selling point of the Neon range is that it's not just built for being a production monitor on set, but because of how good that screen is, it's really uh, it's really trying to find its place in, in the post world as well. So, you know, by all means, you can be using these monitors for, for doing your editing. And the tool sets that, that you get, do they literally match across the entire Atomos range? Small, big, yes. portable, recorder, monitor only, whatever. Yeah, they all match. Yeah. 
Yes, pr pretty much. You know, if you're yeah. used to using false color on a neon, it will be the same false color that you'll get on the Shinobi Five, Shinobi Seven, uh, and the same goes for cool. for the rest of the tools that you have on board there. So once you've used one, you you can kind of use them all. So if you're investing in the ecosystem, i.e., you know, you have an Ninja V Plus and you have a neon, you have a Shogun. If you're flipping between the three, you know realistically you're not going to experience too much of a difference in terms of operating it obviously the screen's are different um, yeah. but in terms of nailing your exposure your focus uh, and your composition they will all allow you to do that with the mm. same experience yeah. you mentioned recording on the neon uh there chris is that an additional extra an option or is that built into it yeah, so if you were if you look at the neon um on the back of the neon it has what they call sort of like the processing brain, which is actually uh, the chassis of a, an Ninja V. Um, that's kind of what's doing the sort of processing on the back side of it. So that clips on into place. Uh, and with that unit, you have uh, an SSD caddy. So you can literally slot in um, an SSD drive and that's where you do your recording and your playback. That is included with the Neons um, because as standard, that, that's just how that they work. Cool. Well, brilliant. I, I, I think we've kind of, you know, I'd like to think we've, covered all of the new products and, and covered what's been going on. Thanks for coming in, Chris. Great to see you again. Hopefully, um, we'll see you uh, in September at the Kit Plus show in Twickenham. I think you're, you're, you're in. And of course, thanks to Media Proxy for supporting the show. Find out why you need their support at mediaproxy.com. And uh, we'll see you next time.